All right, so this is the uh, new interface for uh, Flight 1. We've made it a little easier to pick your filters and your tune. Uh, one thing we've added is it shows right here, you know, what, what tune you have selected. Um, what I recommend doing is uh, maybe going through some of these tunes and trying them because a lot of these right out of the box will just fly really good. This is probably what you want to do to fly. Um, there are a few of them in here. Uh, there's the 419 tune. I guess some people have requested that. There's a 6 inch, a 3 inch, a schizo tune, 2.5 inch tune, uh, GoPro RC12 tune, which was an old version that we had that people liked. Uh, there's the Blackbird FPV tune, the Captor Vanover tune, and a 7 inch 4S tune. Um, if you're doing freestyle, the Blackbird tune, the schizo tune, and the GoPro RC12 tune are all pretty good tunes. For racing, uh, the Captain Vanover tune is pretty good. Um, also, stock seems to be pretty good for racing as well. Um, once you've chosen the tune that you think is flying well, um, you can also you know choose different filters. So I'll show you here. If I choose the Schizo tune, it's going to automatically choose the predictive filter. Um, that's the one he likes the best, and, and that's the one he chose. It also should ch um, change the defiltering as well based on the tune you're picking. You can see it different filters use different um, defiltering even. Uh, so go back to the schizo. You can see it's at 70 with the FIR. Uh, we update these as they update their tunes. So from time to time, if you want to try them again, uh, it might be better. Um, and then if your filtering is not all the way there, you might want to try some of these defaults. Right now we have low, medium, high, uh, depending on how much you want to filter. What's nice about these is it just automatically uh, changes your filter settings based on which tune you're using. Um, Some uh, things to keep in mind, uh, this is a two-stage filtering system. So what this means is this filter is run first, and then this filter here is run second. Uh, the same thing on D, that runs this filter and this filter. Um, the reason you'd want to do this is, is uh, to, to add enhanced filtering in different frequencies. Um, like, for example, I could go to the frequency filter, which uh, is also the PT1. And um, some of the Betaflight guys like running it like around 200 on the first stage and 120 on the second stage. So you can have the same filters you have in Betaflight in Flight 1 or you can use some of our fancy filters like the free, like the predictive filter. The predictive filter isn't um, isn't really a filter. I wouldn't consider it a filter. It, it, it basically takes the future, what it predicts the gyro reading should be based on what it has been and the gyro reading that it actually pulls from the gyro and it comes up with a formula to decide what the gyro reading is. This is a pretty accurate way of, um, of knowing exactly where the gyro should be. This one has been tuned for this model specifically of your quad um, and it works, it works really well especially for freestyle. Uh, you know, Over time we can add more and more data into this to make it more and more accurate um, but the ability for it to know where the gyro should be and where it is lets it decide if the gyro reading is good or bad and how much to adjust it by that. Uh, Defiltering has two stages as well. You can put two frequency filters on here as well at two different ranges. As, you know, I've seen the Betaflight guys do that as well, so you can play with some of that stuff. Uh, again, we have the settings in here I recommend, um, but you can always go from there. One thing that's kind of nice is... If you pick medium filtering, uh, you can see how it flies, and then uh, you can turn off some of these and see if it flies better. I mean, one thing on defiltering I've noticed that if you use the predictive tune, uh, I mean, we've had defiltering up to 200 uh, with really good results even. So the higher this number is, the less filtering you're really having on your, on your uh, quad. Um, if you're doing, you know, if you pick one of these other ones like medium, something that might be good to do is turn off gyro smoothing, smoothing first. I don't really think that's needed on most of these tunes. And then you can increase this bottom number to uh, get less and less filtering. It's set to 200 because most motor noise is at 200. 
Although I have seen it as um, as low as 180. So what I do is I set the cutoff to 170 just to be sure. And then I want even more filtering down low. Um, and you know, sometimes 120 might be enough uh, or less. So you can just slowly increase this number uh, and fly. And every time you increase it, it's less filtering. Um, so, you know, if you want to get the perfect filter, I recommend you find a tune that's decent and then slowly creep up these numbers till you have bad flying uh, characteristics. The same kind of can go with D. Um, D is real easy to see in the log too, so I do recommend using the log. Uh, but that's basically how these filters work. The other thing uh, you have on here are these limit settings. Um, and the way these limit settings work is, so you have a KD limit. So that limits D to 40% of your overall PID values. Uh, the way a PID controller works is it gets P, I, and D. It uh, gets what it thinks it should adjust them to. It averages them all together, and that's how much it increases the motor or decreases the motor. Um, so by limiting these, like I and D, it, it limits the amount of I or D that is used in that calculation. Um, these are these are pretty good as they are, but if you notice, like you know, D is going out of control, you can use this to bring it back uh, to a lower limit. Um, the CG adjustment, uh, the CG adjustment is used uh, if you're having nose up issues. Uh, the lower the number, the less it noses up, I believe, and the higher, if it's nosing down, you can you can raise up that number. Uh, I believe the range is between 80 and 120. Uh, it's percentage based. Uh, a lot of guys find they like it like in the 90s somewhere, so that's something to, to, to adjust. The roll dead band, um, this is 1%, uh, the inside 1% of your stick is ignored. So for Tyrannus, this number usually needs to be higher than Spectrum because um, either they don't have built in dead band or the gimbals are less accurate in the center. Uh, it's just to ignore jitter, so it doesn't look like your stick's moving up, you know, back and forth. Um, the, R, the, the signal smoothing, it smooths the actual controls. Um, this can be anywhere between a 0 and uh, 100 uh, for this mode. Or if you click the new RC smoothing, it's degree based. So this 1000 means it's limited to 1000 degrees per second in increments. Um, so that means your quad will never let your control make it move more than 1000 degrees a second. I find for larger quads, the new RC smoothing is better. But, um, you know, try it out and see which one you like best. I'm going to pick the schizo tune, but I'm going to turn off the smoothie. And then I'm going to use the brick wall filter. And I'm going to set this pretty high. I'm going to say 140. Uh, the brick wall filter is the most filtering you can get. Um, it's literally, like if you visualize a brick wall, that's what the drop off of, of it is at the frequency. Um, this one actually is a little slower filter too. Uh, so um, it, it may delay D a little bit, which is actually at 32 kilohertz, not a bad thing. 